we reading about? We're reading about the white man, right? Read the first verse again. The first verse. The vision of Obadiah, thus said the Lord God concerning Edom. This is about the Edomites. The Edomites are the so-called white people. The name Edom itself means red. That's who God is talking about. Now that last verse that you just read. If these came to thee, God is telling you the characteristics of this white man. Listen good to what he's saying. This is in the fifth verse. If these came to thee, if these, God is going to, he wants you to, uh, I'm covering it up. If God, God wants you to understand the nature of this man. Read it again. If these came to thee, if an ordinary man came to you, if robbers by night, and if a robber came to steal something from you, listen. How would that cut off? How would a robber be cut off? Because what would normal robbers do? They will rob till they get enough and then they'll leave. That ain't what the white man will do. Read it again. That's why this is in here. If thieves came to thee, if robbers by night, how would thou cut off? Come on. Would they not have stolen till they had enough? Most people, most, all the other nations will steal till they get enough. Not the white man. He will steal until he can't steal no more. That's right. God is telling you his nature. You think your preachers would ever show you this? No. Go through, go, through this, go through this chapter. Let's go through this chapter so you'll know that it's just not us having a hate campaign against the white man. That's Something right. so stupid and trivial. We don't have time to just be hating people. Our job is to bring out the Bible. That's petty. I hate you. That's ridiculous. Our job is to bring out the words of the Bible. Verse uh, 1. I'm going to be quick. The vision of Obadiah. Thus said the Lord God concerning Edom. This is about Edom. The children of Esau. When you read in Genesis 25, 25, it said the first child came out red. Yeah. That's his color. We Come have on. heard a rumor from the Lord. Give me the third verse. That's part of the rumor. Verse 3. The pride of thine heart hath deceived thee. God said, the pride of your mind, Edom, hath deceived you. Who is he talking about? Read. Thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock. God is letting you know who he's talking about. He said, you that dwelt in the caves. That's right. Read it again. The pride of thine heart hath deceived thee. Your pride hath deceived you, white man. Thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock. Thou that dwellest in the caves. Thou that dwelt in the cliffs of the rocks. Meaning the Caucasus Mountains. That's, That's the reason why they got that name on them. Caucasian. A lot of people don't even understand what the word Caucasian means. It does not mean colorless. It does not mean white. The word Cauc Caucasian means cave dwellers. That's, That's right. why they have a mountain. Of, That's why they have a range of mountains called the Caucasus Mountains. That's, right. so That's where they come from. That's the right. name Caucasian means cave dwellers. That's what God is telling you. Read the third verse again. The pride of thine heart hath deceived thee. Thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock. He said, your mind hath deceived you. You are the ones that dwelt in the caves. So he's letting you know who he's talking about. Read. Whose habitation is high. So God's going to give you another clue. He said, their habitation is high. Who has higher habitations than the white man? Nobody. Look at his building. Who has taller buildings so you can understand? Habitations are places where you dwell. Like he dwelt in the caves, bringing it up today, he has his tall buildings. His nature has not changed. Read that again. Thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock, Come whose on. habitation is high. Whose habitation is high. He has higher buildings above everybody. Come on. That saith in his heart, who shall bring me down to the ground? And who can make that statement but him? That saith in his heart, who shall bring me down to the ground? Can the Negro say that? Can the African say that? Can the, can the Arab say that? No. Why? Because the white man is over all of them. Read that again so you can understand. Go down. What is that? No. Whose habitation is high, that saith in his heart, this, who, this man says in his heart, Who shall bring me down to the ground? Nobody can make that statement unless they're ruling over everybody else. Is the white man ruling over everybody? Talk to me. Yes. So we're reading about him. 
Read it again. Whose habitation is high, the sand in his heart, who shall bring me down to the ground? Nobody else can make that statement but him because he's ruling over everybody. He's got the weapons so you can understand. He's got control of all the gold. He's got control of everything. That's right. So who can say, who else can make that statement? If, he, if he's got control of everything, he can make the statement that says, who shall take me down? Because he's on top of everybody else. Read it again. That saith in his heart. That saith in his heart, who shall bring me down to the ground? So who are we talking about? The white man. What is his biblical name? Edom. Let's add up the clues. Is it not red? Yes. Did he dwell in the caves? Does he have high buildings? Is he ruling over everybody saying, now, can anybody take me out? That's him. This is this more. He read. Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, whose symbol is the eagle? That's what the brother was bringing out earlier. Whose emblem is the eagle? The bald eagle. The white man, that's his, that's his signal, that's his image. When you look on a mail truck, what do you see, an eagle? When you go to court, what do you see, an eagle? When you pull out a dollar bill, what's on it, an eagle? When he went to the, so, so you can understand that he knows his prophecy. When he went to the moon, what did he say? The eagle has landed. Because the white man knows his Bible. He, he tells you lies in his churches, but he knows that this is him. That's he hasn't right. written in his history books that he's the descendant of eagle. You think he's going to tell you that in these colleges? No. We went and talked to some of the colleges and the students in the colleges didn't know what the hell we were talking about That's until right. we went to their campus libraries and showed the books. I, didn't, I don't think they heard what I said. Right. I said we went to their campus libraries, pulled the books out and showed it to them. That's right. And they said, where did you get the books from? And we said, we got them right out of your campus libraries. Why is it that you don't know about it being that you're paying tuition? That's right. Read. Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle. Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, because that's their symbol. Read. And though thou set thy nest among the stars. Who's doing space travel? The white man. Though thou set thy nest among the stars. Are the Negroes out there? Are the Arabs out there? Are the Chinese out there? No, the white man. He's out there. He literally has his nest among the stars. That's right. Read. And though thou set thy nest among the stars, thence will I bring thee down, saith the Lord. The Lord said, when you start doing that, now I'm going to start to bring you down. Guess what? That's the reason why you're hearing what you're hearing now. Because it's time for them to go out. It's time for you to know the truth. That's right. That's what he's saying. That's the reason God's timetable is as he starts to bring them down, he's going to raise this truth up. That's why you never heard this before. How long have they had churches out here? For ages. We're reading the Bible and a lot of people walking past it and they have no idea that we're reading the Bible. The Bible of all, of all books. That's what we read. Read on. If thieves came to thee, if robbers by night, how art thou cut off? So that's why I read all that before so you know it's talking about him. If, this, if thieves came to you by night, that's how a robber gonna come, ain't he? He gonna come when you ain't looking. He gonna break into your house, he gonna steal some furniture. He gonna, huh? Right, but my point is, he gonna steal until he get enough. Once he got what he wants, he's gone. He ain't coming back no more. That's not how Esau is. Esau will steal, go back and steal again until he takes everything, take the land, take everything. And he still ain't enough for him. He's still robbing people so you can understand. That's right. He is still to this day robbing people. That's his name. I'm showing you what his nature is. He has not stopped. He can't get enough. He stole this country. He put the people in slavery. Is that enough for him? No. He's going overseas, messing with them. Everywhere he's gone, he's put the people in hell, stole from them, robbed them, left the people sitting on the ground on huts and stole all their resources. And people running around talking about he's a Christian. That shows you how dumb our people have become listening to this same snake sit up there in the pulpit teaching. Read it again. If thieves came to thee, if robbers by night, how art thou cut off? God yeah. said, how are you going to be cut off? Because a regular thief would stop. But God said, God is going to have to cut him off. That's the only way he's going to be stopped. God himself is going to have to stop him. 
so you can understand. Because none of us, you're not going to love your way into getting him to stop killing you. A lot of you older brothers, you know how this man did. He ain't felt sorry for, if he's so Christian, why won't he give this land back to the Native American Indians? Where's the Christianity there? What about the so-called Negroes that have been forced to work for free? Where's the payment for them? You, you still don't understand how this man is? And this is not so you can understand, this is not a campaign against him. I'm just mentioning to you about this because the real campaign is about you and the brothers and sisters, the Israelites, returning unto Christ. That's right. Before Christ dropped the boom. That's the reason, because God is going to put a, he's going to set flames to all of this. This is not the utopia of God's program, so you can understand. When in the Lord's prayer, when he says, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth. Is God's will being done on earth right now? No, because everybody's crying, everybody's in captivity, everybody's suffering. You understand, when God's will gets here, all this garbage is going to be laid low. That's right. So what, is the, what does the battle of Armageddon talk about? That means this man who's ruling the earth is going to fight against Christ. That's why he's got the weapons. Y'all don't understand that. I'm going too deep now, so I'm going to stay back. But that's what, the, um, that's what the war of Armageddon is all about. This man with his weapons, his space garbage, that he think he's going to take out Christ and the angels. Y'all don't understand the reality of what the Bible's talking about. God calls this man to build the nuclear weapons, and he's going to cause him to use the weapons on his own side. You think you're going to build something to stop God? Are you crazy? God calls the people to build the weapons. That's right. Give me that. Isaiah 54. Let's read it out the Bible. What are we reading? God's Word. The Bible, the book that everybody said they trusted. Let's see. Isaiah 54, verse 16. Behold, I have created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire. This is God talking. God says, Behold, I have created the smith. What is a smith? The blacksmith. The blacksmith is a man that made weapons. The blacksmith is a man that made weapons of war. Like they made shields, bucklers, helmets, swords. Huh? He makes, he's an iron worker. But out of that iron, he makes weapons. Read it again. Behold! Tell them where you're reading that. So they'll know that we're not reading some black book that we sat down and wrote. Isaiah 54, verse 16. Behold, I have created the smith that blow up the coals in the fire. So what did, when it say he had the blower to make the fire big so that he can make swords? So that he can make weapons. Listen. And that bringeth forth an instrument for his work. And God calls this smith to bring forth an instrument for his work. What is the work of the Lord? And I have created the waster to destroy. So what smiths make weapons today? They're called scientists. Right. So what is the weapon that these scientists make? Wasters. Wasters. Read it again. And I have created... The waster! The, and I have created the waster! The waster! That means the nuclear bomb. When it hits, it wastes everything. That's right. And I have created the waster to destroy. So it's clear. So, so the Smith back then made weapons of war that was about killing in the fields and all of that. But the weapons that they use today are missiles. God has it recorded. Give me one more. Uh, uh, Isaiah 9 and 5. Huh? Yeah. Isaiah 9 and 5. Listen. Yeah. Isaiah 9 listen, and listen 5. Up. Listen good. Listen. Because somebody might say, that's not talking about nuclear weapons. Your brother's making that up. Let's see. For every battle, Isaiah 9 verse 5. For every battle of the warrior is with confused noise. All of the wars prior to the nuclear war was with confused noise. If you ever hear how war is conducted, it's a, lot of, it's a very noisy atmosphere. People are dying and screaming, heads are getting chopped off, they're cutting off limbs, stabbing, you understand? You got bullets, there's a lot of noise and scatter of gunfire all over the place. It's a very noisy atmosphere. Read it again. But every battle of the warrior is with confused noise. Come on. And garments rolled in blood. And when the men went to war, and they got stabbed, they had their bloody garments on, and garments rolled in blood, because when you're fighting in a war, you're gonna get blood on you. That's, God is describing all of the wars prior to the last war. Listen, 
But this shall be. But this war that's coming up now shall be what? Shall be with burning and fuel of fire. That's plain. But this war is going to be with burning and fuel of fire, meaning nuclear destruction. That's what it's talking about. One more. Mal uh, Malachi 4 and 1. Malachi 4 and 1. Malachi 4 verse 1. Listen. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven. God literally means that. It's going to be like you're standing inside an oven. What is he describing? What are the prophets describing? Because the Lord gave the prophets the information to write down. They're trying to describe what God is showing them. So there's only way to describe it is saying, picture yourself standing inside an oven at full blast. That's what kind of day is, going, is coming to the earth. Right? Do, do they have weapons that can produce that now? Yes. Did they have those kind of weapons in his time? No. Read it again. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven. Come on. And all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. All of our people that don't repent, Christ is going to have them burned up as well. That's what the so-called rapture is about. He's going to take us out during the destruction. That's what that's talking about. When it's when you read it, when you talk, when our foreparents in the fields in slavery used to sing about it, swing low, sweet chariot coming forth to carry me home. They weren't crazy. That's they right. They understood the scriptures. That's right. The dumb preachers haven't told you that, and and they should have told us that because we are the descendants of those same people that was in those slave fields. That's right. Our foreparents knew about the deliverance, but us today we come dumb. Right. Our foreparents knew about that thing. Swing low, sweet chariot. The chariots is talking about the vehicles that the Lord and his angels going to save us. When the nuclear weapons come to hit this place, that's when they're going to take us up. The ones of our people that repent. The rest of our people that don't repent, he said it's going to be screaming and gnashing of teeth. They're going to be screaming and dying. Read. And the day that cometh shall burn them up. And the day, that hot day, that shall feel like an oven shall burn them up. Saith the Lord of hosts. Saith who? Saith the Lord of hosts. So you mean to tell me these people are going to build a weapon that God don't know about? God caused them to make those nuclear weapons. That's right. Zechariah. Zechariah. <laughs> let's see. Let, let's, let's. Let's read about the actual description of how this weapon works. Reverend Johnson never showed you this in church, did he? Come on. Zechariah uh, 12 and 14. Okay, Zechariah 14, verse 12. Read. And this shall be the place. And this shall be the place wherewith the Lord will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. This is, good. this is the reason why God created that weapon. Because he's going to use that weapon against all those that fought against the Israelites. You don't understand. Everything that was done on this planet Earth was done for your benefit. Our people are so small in their mind, they can't understand that. They can't accept that. They, they speak so inferior. No, God wouldn't do that for me. God literally made, listen good to what I'm saying. God literally made the planet Earth for you. That's right. Read. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet. Read the verse above. Read the, the beginning of the verse again. And this shall be the plague wherewith. What is a plague? A plague is a sickness that's designed to kill people. Right. A plague is designed to kill you. Read it again. And this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite all the people. This is a plague that I'm going to use to kill all the people. Come on. All the people that have fought against Jerusalem. All the people that have fought against the Israelites. Their flesh. Now we're going to listen to the plague. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet. What does that mean? That means that missile is so hot that your flesh is going to be off of your bones before the gravity has a chance to pull your skeleton to the ground. That's right. Read. Read it again. Their flesh shall consume away 
Well, they stand upon their feet. Their flesh shall be gone. Their flesh shall be evaporated from their bones due to extreme heat resulting from those ICBM missiles. Read. And their eyes shall consume away in their holes. And the heat from those missiles are so hot it's going to cause your eyes to melt in your sockets. And their tongue shall consume away in their mouth. And your tongue is going to literally melt in your mouth. So what is God talking about? Nuclear destruction. Peter's one more. Second Peter's three and ten. Listen. Second Peter's three and ten. We read now what we read. We read about how he made the weapons. Now you've read about the use of the weapons. Now let's see how they sound. Second Peter's three and ten. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. But the day of the Lord will catch our people that refuse to repent. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. Because a lot of our people thinking that Christ is not going to come back. Even though we're reading out the Bible that God has weapons made to bring on the destruction. Our people are hearing this and still, because their mind is so messed up, they still won't get themselves right. The warning is being extended to you right now. That's right. Read. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. Meaning that a lot of people trying to say, I'm going to get right when? You need to get right now because he may come tomorrow. He may come in 15 minutes. And Read the, it again. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. Come on. And the which the heavens shall pass away with the great noise. The word heavens here is talking about the kingdoms. And which the kingdoms shall pass away with a great noise. What is the great noise? Boom! That's what the great noise is. Read it again. And the, and the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. And the ele excuse me, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Heat from what? I'm asking you, heat from what? Thank you. The nuclear missiles that God has recorded in the Bible. That's what's gonna cause everything to melt. When people read about the lake of fire, they don't realize what that's talking about. That's talking about the nuclear weapons. That's what's going to bring the fire. The weapons are already made. And the elements shall melt with burning heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. And the works and everybody that's doing wickedly that don't repent, they're going to die here. They're going to die with their slave masters. They're going to die with their enemies. Because Christ has only taken those who repent. He's only taken the Israelites of his people that repent. Amos 9. Amos 9. Amos 9 and 8. 9 and 9. Amos 9 verse 9. 9 and 8. 8 to 10. Come on. Behold, the eyes of the Lord God are upon the sinful kingdom. Behold, the, the eyes of the Lord God are upon the sinful kingdom. This is the reason why the Lord's prayer says that my will will be done in this earth. So he's got to get rid of the will of this society. That's right. That's going to be done through war. Right. Come on. And I will destroy it from off the face of the earth. And God said, read it again. And I, the whole thing, behold, the eyes of the Lord God are upon the sinful kingdom. Behold, the eyes of the Lord God are upon the sinful kingdom, not a righteous kingdom, a sinful kingdom that was built on murder, thievery, robbery, lies. That's what he's talking about. Read it again. Behold, the eyes of the Lord God are upon the sinful kingdom. Behold, the eyes of the Lord God are upon the sinful kingdom. Come on. And I will destroy it from off the face of the earth. And I, God, will destroy that wicked kingdom from off the face of the earth. Listen. Saving that I will not utterly destroy the house of Jacob, says the Lord. Saving that I will do what? I will not utterly destroy the house of Jacob. That I will not utterly destroy the nation of Israel. Why is he saying utterly? Because two-thirds are going to die. He's not going to completely kill all the Israelites. He's going to kill two-thirds of them. Because two-thirds of them will not repent. Two-thirds of them will hear the law and they will act like this is a game. And then when the Lord send those missiles over to wipe them out, the game time is going to be over. It's going to be time for screaming and dying. 
read it again. And that I will not utterly destroy the house of Jacob. I will not completely destroy the house of Jacob because one third of these people are going to repent for their sins. They're going to remember that they're Israelites. They're going to return back to the commandments in Christ and they're going to keep the law. That's right. That's what one third of them are going to do. It's already recorded in here. He said the rest of them are going to die because the rest of them, their brain is too gummed up to accept what the Bible says. The rest of them, their minds are too gummed up in Christianity. So that's what's going to get them killed. Because Christianity ain't going to teach you nothing. Right? But no, I will command and I will send the house of Israel among all nations. God says, behold, I will command and I will sift the house of Israel from among all nations. That's the so-called raptures that you understand. He's going to take out the Israelites that repented. Read. Like as corn is sifted in a seed. So God is going to, like you sift corn in a seed, you're, you're shaking out the things that you don't want. So he's going to allow the rebellious of our people to die. He's going to allow, he's going to allow the hard-headed Israelites that don't want to return, he's going to allow them to die. The only ones he's going to save are the ones that's going to keep his commandments. Read. Yet shall not the last grain fall upon the earth. Not the least grain, meaning not one of you that repent shall die. That's what God is saying. All of you that repent in the name of Christ and keep his commandments, he says, I'm going to save you. The rest of you, I'm going to allow you to die. Read. All the sinners of my people shall die by the sword. All the sinners of my people shall die by the sword. Come on. Which say, the evil shall, shall not overtake your preventers. Some of them, our people are saying, look, we're not, we don't believe that that's going to happen. Read it, read it right. Read it again. Read that statement again. All the sinners of my people shall die by the sword. Come on. Which say, the evil shall not overtake your preventers. Which say, the evil that God is talking about bringing on us shall not kill us. Because what they think, they think that they're going to rule, they think they're going to be in sin forever. They don't realize that God says that the wages of sin is death. He means that. He means there's going to come a time when the mercy is going to run out. You have mercy now. That's the reason why Christ died on the cross. To give you the mercy, to give you, give you your chance to repent. But if you refuse that mercy, he's going to cut off the mercy and allow you to die. Your mercy is your grace period to get yourselves right. That's why, these, that's why we're out here. We're not out here for a show. God caused you to hear these words so that you can repent. That's the purpose. That's right. Read it again. All the sinners of my people shall die by the sword. All of the sinners of my people, of my people, shall, shall die by the sword. Which shall die by the sword. Come on. Which say, the evil shall not overtake. And a lot of our people say, ain't nothing going to happen. That's recorded in the book of Peter. The scoffers, that's what it's talking about. The scoffers, that's what they say. Give me that. I'm going to close it up, right? I'm going to close it up. Peter 3. This is what they say. That's why a lot of time I see a lot of our people come out here and act ignorant and crazy. I just feel sorry for them. Peter 3 and 3. Where's Peter? 2 Peter 3 and 3. 2 Peter 3 and 3. Know this verse that there shall come in the last days. Scoffers. That there shall come in the last days. What is God talking about? The days that we're in right now. In these last days, we understand that God has nuclear weapons made. We wouldn't have understood that years ago, would we? Because there wasn't no such thing as it. So we're in the last days. Read. During this verse, that death shall come in the last days. Scoffers. Scoffers. Scoffers meaning people that scoff against the Bible. That's what it's talking about. Calling the Bible a lie. That's what a scoffer is. Come on. Walking after their own lust. Walking after the lies that they've been taught. Walking after their own desires. After their own lust. In other words, you're trying to tell them, repent, change according to the laws of the Bible. They said, no, we're going to stay in our own way. That's what it meant to say, walk in their own lust. They don't want to hear what God is talking about. They don't want to hear what Christ is talking about. So God got a penalty for that, and it's called death. Read. And saying, where is the promise of his coming? And this is what the people say. Where is the promise of his coming? Because they figure that Christ ain't coming back. Because they're listening to these false preachers. Come on. Where is the promise of his coming? Read. But since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were 
from the beginning of the creation. What people people believe that nothing's going to change. They said, "Listen, my father been talking about Christ, my grandfather been talking about Christ. Who made you think that Christ going to come back?" God has that recorded in the Bible. God's ready to know that the same people did that during the time of Noah. Read. Come but, on. But this, they willingly are ignorant. But by this statement, they are people are willingly ignorant. Come on. Of that by the word of God, the heavens were of old. The heavens were the kingdoms of old. Talking about during the time of Noah. He said the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of the water and in the water. What happened during the time of Noah? There was a great flood that flooded that whole kingdom. That flooded the earth. That's what he's saying. So you had a group back then that was scoffing against no that was scoffing against uh, Noah. He said, look at this fool. He's building a boat on sand. Because it didn't rain back then. It only used to draw a mist. There was a mist, a mist that used to water the earth. So it never rained before Noah's time. So when Noah was telling them that it was that a flood was coming, they thought he was crazy. Like people here are talking about the nuclear weapons, they think we're crazy. But I got news for you, you've heard of nuclear weapons, haven't you? There's a difference. God has given you that much information for you to get yourselves right. That's right. Read. Whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. So when it was time for them to die, they ran to the ship. Let us in, let us in. But the Lord said, he shut the door. He wanted them to die. Because they did not listen when Noah was preaching. So he says, I'm going to make sure that you drown. That's exactly what he's going to do in this trip. The ones of our people that don't repent when Christ sent them angels, it's finished. But the heavens and the earth which are now. But the kingdoms and the earth which are now. Yes. Listen. By the same word that kept the storm. By the same Bible. This is the same word that Noah was preaching. By the same word I kept in store. Read it again. By the heavens and the earth which are now. But the kingdoms that are now. What are the kingdoms that are now? America is a kingdom. Russia is a kingdom. China. All of those kingdoms are in existence now. Listen to what God said about them. By the same word. By the same Bible. Are kept in store. These kingdoms are kept in reserve. Reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. What, where's the fire going to come from? Where's the fire that's going to destroy these kingdoms? Where's it going to come? He said, back then I used water, now I'm going to use fire. The nuclear weapons. That's what that's what this chapter is talking about. So when I read earlier, further down, that's when it says that the kingdoms are going to be blasted away with a great noise. It's in the same chapter. Okay, so I say that because a lot of people have been fooled into thinking that the Bible is garbage. That's the worst mistake you can make on your on this earth. That's right. You don't realize that you're turning down your own history. You're turning down the facts that pertain to you. 